Hey everyone, I'm Ken Whiting, and on this episode of Paddle TV, we're checking out the main channel of the Ottawa River. This is the channel that people travel all over to experience. It's got some of the best play waves in the world and some of the biggest rapids in the world. Before we get into it though, please subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell and check out the Paddle Tales series if you haven't. It goes, it, it showcases incredible paddling adventures in some of the world's top paddling destinations. There's a link in the description box down below. The main channel is like, it's the main event of the Otto River. The, the Otto River is broken into two channels. You've got the, the main channel and you have the middle channel. The main channel gets about two thirds of the water while the middle channel gets about a third of the water. There's a paddling guide uh, for the middle channel. If you're interested in that channel, the, the middle channel is about class two, three in general, although it has enough to push uh, even the best paddlers. Um, the main channel is class two to four and it's bigger, bigger waves, pushier water, uh, a little bit more intimidating. It's about five to five miles in length and it has about uh, six or seven rapids in total. Uh, each rapid is significant and uh, it all starts with McCoy's Rapid. Now McCoy's Rapid is the first rapid of both the middle and the main channel because the river splits after it. Uh, McCoy's is a very significant rapid. Uh, it can be scouted and portaged on the river right hand side very easily. There's a, a nice path the whole way down, lots of places to take a look at the rapid. The way to look at the rapid is in two parts. You've got the upper part and the lower part. The upper part has two holes, two big holes. One's called Sattler's on the left and the one af after it on the right is called Phil's Hole. Lots of ways to get through this section of McCoy's, um, but the most common line is to thread the needle between the two holes. There's also tongues in the holes that you can punch. There's all sorts of different options when running McCoy's. It's just a matter of how creative you want to get and, and how okay you are with the idea of ending up in one of the big holes. The lower section of McCoy's is a bit more playful. Uh, it starts as the river bends to the right and it begins with corner wave right on the right hand side of the river. It's one of the fastest, most dynamic surf waves that you'll ever experience. The tricky thing about corner wave is that it happens right above horseshoe hole and baby face wave. And if the water's low, those can be some significant holes. You want to be in control when you're going through there. Horseshoe hole and baby face waves not only are they significant, but they are world-class play spots on their own. And in fact, many people spend the whole day at the bottom of McCoy's surfing corner wave, horseshoe and baby face and never make it downstream. After McCoy's, you have the longest flat water section of the river. It's about a mile between McCoy's and the first rapid of the main channel, which is called the Lorne. Now about halfway along that flat water section, you'll run into the gauge on the right hand shore. Now the gauge ranges from minus two to 20 and the water sometimes goes below that and the water sometimes goes above that. Water levels from above 20 to around eight can be considered high. From eight to two can be considered me uh, medium levels and from two down to negative four is considered low water levels. When paddling along the flat section to get to the main channel, the key is to stay right. Uh, if you go left, you're gonna end up going down the middle channel. Stay right, follow the bulk of the water. It'll, it will take you there and you'll end up at the Lorne. It can be confusing sometimes because there's parts that feel like just a big lake where there's no current even identifiable stick to the right and you'll end up there. The Lorne is a classic Ottawa Rapid. It has some of the most well-known features depending on the water level. At low water you have Garburator, at high water you have the Bus Eater, one of the biggest uh, most playful surf waves um, that people come from all around the world to experience. 
Now, running the Lorne is fairly straightforward. It's a big black tongue of water that just speeds you along into Garb Raider and the first series of waves. You have a bit of time to collect yourself with fast moving water before the lower sections, section of waves, which is called the Waikiki waves. If it's higher water, to the left of the Waikiki waves is where you'll find the bus eater. Like all Ottawa rapids, there's a thousand different ways to run the Lorne. There's no right way. Uh, there's, as you get more experienced, you'll get more creative with your lines. And as you become more comfortable with the big water and being in big holes, the number of options of lines just opens right up to you. The Lorne can be walked and scouted very easily from the river right hand shore. Below the Lorne, you don't have very long before you come to the next rapid, which is Butcher's Knife. Along the way, if it's low water, you do benefit from Push Button, one of the greatest little play spots, but it's only there at low, low water. Butcher's Knife itself is similar at almost every level. It's a uh, wave train with a hole in the middle called the chopping block. Uh, the lower the water is, the bigger the chopping block gets. It can be very surfable, very fun at certain levels. Butcher's Knife is a pretty straightforward rapid at almost every water level. The easiest line is far left. You can miss the chopping block wave or hole that's in the middle of the rapid. At some levels, that chopping block wave can be very significant. It can, it can really stop you. At other levels, it can be a great surf. Past chopping block, there's not much except down below you have some whirlpools that you can play around in. One thing to know about Butcher's Knife is one of the reasons it has its name is because the rock in the area is very rough and it's it very sharp in some spots. And so just be careful if you're swimming or when you're getting out on shore for, what, for whatever reason that you're, you're careful on the rocks. Below Butcher's Knife, you have one of the most beautiful sections of the river. It's a meandering class one and two white water with gorgeous rock formations on the side, some jumping rocks, including two well-known ones, one BFR and one at Miami Beach. There's, uh, it's just a beautiful, beautiful section to, to cruise through before you get to Norman's. Now, Norman's is a really interesting rapid. The whole river gets narrowed into this mini little canyon. I have always referred to it as like putting your thumb over a garden hose and the water just gets shot through this narrow gap. And you get these funky offset waves that rock your boat, kayak and, and boat back and forth. Uh, and at the bottom of the rapid, it creates all this high water pressure hitting, uh, hitting the slower moving water down below and kept confined by this canyon forces the water to come up in funky waves and ways and so you get all sorts of crazy boils and whirlpools and, and not a great place to swim but a fun place to to mess around in in your kayak. Normans is easily scouted on the river right hand side and it can be walked on the right hand side as well although the big rocks make walking a little bit challenging. The next rapid after Normans is Coliseum. And if it's high water, there's not much of a break. You're going right into it. At most flows, you have some nice flat water before you drop right into Coliseum. Coliseum at high water is an absolute beast. It's one of the biggest rapids that most people will ever have the opportunity to paddle. For such a big rapid, it's quite friendly though. Uh, it just would not be a very fun swim. And so it really is at high water an expert's uh, run. At normal flows, Coliseum is a tricky rapid only because the water is so funky. You get a lot of chaotic water, breaking waves, although the line is pretty straightforward. Uh, there's a big wave, the kahuna is the is a big hole right in the middle of the rapid near the top. You can go to the right of that fairly easily and then just punch a variety of waves down the right hand side. If the water's low enough, you can also go to the left of that center hump of, of the kahuna and miss a lot of the stuff to the left. Either way, 
there's a fairly substantial eddy on river right and river left down below to, uh, to gather yourself before the last couple of rapids. Coliseum can be scouted easily from the left hand side. There's even an observation platform there that gives a great look of the rapid. It can easily be portaged on the left hand side as well. Below Coliseum, the river splits up into three channels. A left channel, the center slot, and dog's leg, which is the far right channel. Center slot is the most challenging of the three routes. It's got a big pour over from the right against the left hand shore almost to the right hand shore. The line is come around the corner and run it to the right side of center. Look for the tongue. Dog's leg is more straightforward, a nice wave train right down the middle, and the left hand line is the shallowest line and, and is, can be read on the fly. Below Dog's leg and center slot, you have some more meandering current around a cool house size rock and some beautiful rock formations. And then you reach the final rapid, which is Black's Rapid. Black's Rapid isn't a major rapid like the rest of the main channel rapids. It starts with some nice, mellow, class one, two waves. And if you stay to the left of the bottom, it continues that way. If you veer right at the bottom, there are a couple of holes. At low water, those holes can be nasty, so make sure you miss them, stay right through the middle, and uh, you'll hit a nice clean wave train. Ultimately, this brings you to Hell's Half Mile. And Hell's Half Mile is where the middle and the main channels come back together. It's moving water, it's class one. It's a great place to hop out and do some body surfing. If you want to, you can body surf your way all the way to the Paddler's Takeout or to the Wilderness Tours Takeout, which is about a mile downstream. There aren't a ton of places to stay when you're visiting the Ottawa River, but there are some good ones. Wilderness Tours itself, which is based at the takeout, is a great option because they have camping, and they have cabins, and they also have meal programs if you want to get, get into those. Uh, the fact that it's at the takeout just makes it super convenient. You can literally just finish the day, pull your boat uh, up to your campsite, or carry it up to your cabin, and, uh, and relax for the rest of the day. Uh, another great option is the Whitewater Inn in Beechburg. If you want a more uh, a comfier place, um, if you want uh, a quieter place, uh, more special place itself. The Whitewater Inn is a beautiful bed and breakfast operated by Cindy Jamison, who knows the river and the trails of the area, who knows the region as well as anyone. There are not a lot of options when it comes to places to eat in the area, but once again, there's some good ones. Con for convenience sake, if you're staying at Wilderness Tours, camping or in the cabins, they also have a meal program. And that's a very easy way to, uh, to take care of your food. Uh, in between the put-in and the takeout, not on the river, but on the, the road, you'll also find the Whitewater Brewery. Although it's not open early in the spring or late in the fall, the brewery is a great place to get some, some uh, local beer and some great food. They also have a, uh, a, a year-round operation in the small town of Cobden, which is only about 15 minutes away. Fantastic food, fantastic scene, well worth going to. Other than that, there's some other little quick options around the small towns. But once you get into Pembroke or Renfrew, about 25 minutes away, you have all sorts of options from fast food to, uh, to you know, sit down restaurants. If you need some guidance going down the Ottawa River or want to learn while you're here, because these types of waves, this type of big water is not something that a lot of people are used to if they're not from the area. And having a little instruction, having a little guidance can go a long way to making the, the experience more fun and more um, fruitful. And so there's a couple of options. Wilderness Tours has their Ottawa Kayak School and then there's Liquid Skills. Both uh, schools have been around for years 
and offer, have great instructors and offer a great service. While the Ottawa River flows right through Canada's capital city of Ottawa, the section that for whitewater paddling is about an hour and a half away in the Ottawa Valley. Now, it's not simple to get here. There's no real bus routes or trains or anything easy like that. Your best option if, is to fly into Ottawa, rent a car and drive up an hour and a half to the Whitewater region. The Ottawa River's big water really lends itself to whitewater kayaking. Uh, although you do find people whitewater canoeing here too, it's not uncommon to have whitewater canoers here. Better know what you're doing though because whitewater canoes will get swamped very quickly by the big waves here and uh, you'll spend a lot of your time emptying your canoe on shore. So while the uh, whitewater kayaks are the preferred option by most people. Whitewater canoeing is, an op is another option here. One thing to note is that currently that inflatables, rafts and inflatable kayaks aren't allowed down the Ottawa River. The paddling season on the Ottawa River really starts some point in April, once the ice is broken up and you can safely get on the water. At that time of year, it's cold and the water is Big. The water is high. The waves are huge. That's a great time for experienced paddlers. Typically, by the time it gets to June, June, the, uh, the water's warming up. The water's starting to come down, and it becomes a, a friendlier river to a wider variety of people. July and August is the prime time on the Otto River. The water is bath temperature. It's warm. The water is typically lower, beautiful play levels, friendly levels, and uh, you sometimes get some lineups on key play features. Uh, the fall paddling is less busy, of course, as, as people head back to school and work, um, but it's a beautiful time of year to be on the river, and you can expect to be able to paddle the Ottawa until end of November, early December. At that point, you can still paddle, but it's really cold. For more information on paddling the middle channel of the Otto River, uh, visit wilderness-tours.com or shaggydesigns.com. Shaggydesigns.com actually has a live online water level gauge so that at any time of the year, you can check and see what the water level's at.